All right, it's time for the next Lee Code contest. It is weekly contest 182, and it will begin soon. So uh, let me just make sure the timer is all right. And um, yeah, okay, that's fine. So it's time to start explaining the problems because um, because I just couldn't be bothered to solve the last problem because it's so freaking hard. Okay, so so yeah, I will go through the first three problems and I will explain the last problem, even though I wasn't able to solve it. Uh, like I'll explain how you might approach it, but I can't. I can't do that right now. Let's just put these out. So, problem one. Find lucky integer in an array. Uh, a lucky integer is an integer who has the same frequency as itself. So, like, the number has to occur itself times. Basically, what we do is we just bash it, we loop through the entire array, and then we count the frequency of that number in the array, and then if it's good, we add it to a set because we don't want duplicate values. And then um, we have to return the maximum value. So we return the maximum value. Um, and if it's negative, it's negative one if there do not exist any lucky numbers. So we set it, we set the maximum value to negative one at first. And that way it will return negative one if there isn't anything at the end. Okay, problem two, count number of teams. There are N soldiers standing in a line. Each soldier is assigned a unique 
rating value. Um, you have to form a team of three soldiers among them under the following rules. Choose three soldiers with index I, J, K, um, and then a team is valid if their ranking is the same order as their indices, or if their rating is in opposite order. So basically, if it's increasing or it's decreasing. Um, yeah, this is a pretty easy problem. We can actually just bash this by figuring out all possible combinations of three soldiers. And there are 20 choose three ways to do that, which is approximately 1 million. And 1 million can be handled. So we literally just bash it. And that works. Okay, problem three. Design underground system. Implement the class underground system that supports three methods. Um, okay, basically there's a lot of stations in an underground, like, subway or something so we have to compute the average amount of time it takes to get to get from one station to another directly which is good because that means we don't have to like check where they get on and off and whatever so we we just record every single time they get on and every single time they get off um yeah and that is done by the check-in and check-out methods uh, basically, passengers have IDs, they get on, they get off, and yeah, basically we have two dictionaries. One records the num uh, the, the people who are currently on um, uh, a train, and the other one just records the sum of the amount of time it takes to get from one station to another, and uh, that is also a dictionary. So check in we just put something in the dictionary that records um, the people who are currently in transit and check out we add stuff to the sum of times and get average time we divide the sum of times by how many people have traveled that route and that is pretty simple except no it's pretty easy it's not very simple okay problem four find all good strings Given the strings S1 and S2 of size n, like length n, and the string evil, we have to return the number of good strings. A good string has size n. It is alphabetically greater than or equal to S1. It is alphabetically smaller than or equal to S2. And it does not contain the string evil as a substring. Um, yeah, we use complementary counting here, except you can't actually... Well, okay, we use complementary counting with uh, the principle of inclusion and exclusion, which is some um, math stuff. Basically, we consider the strings that have the evil string as a substring, and then we subtract that from the total number of strings. So we have simplified it down to computing the number of evil strings. Uh, to do that, we define a number of, actually we define one utility function, which determines the number of strings that are between two strings inclusive. So uh, what we do for that is we find the place value of each string. Like we can treat this as a base 26 integer and we can subtract them with place value subtraction. Uh, and Python has, I mean, I guess all languages have to have it, but there is a, there's a pow function which raises an integer to another integer, but takes it mod whatever. And that makes it that makes it easier to compute high powers, <clears throat> modulo, whatever. And we have to return a mod this. So, yeah. Um, we consider the evil string at, a, at all possible indices, and it's not very long, and is only 500. But, yeah. And we consider uh, the evil string at each index, and we see what values the other, the other string, uh, the other characters that are not limited can be and there's 20 choices 26 choices for each character if it's not restricted and restricting takes the edge cases over here um, otherwise we can uh, otherwise we can just go through everything and multiply but the problem is if we consider um, a string at an index what if what if uh, what if the evil string also appears at a different index like we counted that string twice because we counted the time when it was in the first pl uh, position and we counted when it was in the second position. But that's the same string, so we counted it twice. And that's where the principle of inclusion-exclusion comes in. 
we have to count the number of times it appears once, subtract the number of times it appears twice, add the number of times it appears three times, subtract the number of times it appears four times, and so on. That would be easy enough, but there's also um, strings that start the same way as they end. And that means we can join them together like with overlap. And that just makes it really difficult. And that is why only, um, that is why only 52 people have, 53 people have solved it. And that, I guess, means it's really difficult. <sighs> so I guess it's time for a contest summary. Um, this was a pretty easy contest. Uh, the first three problems were all easy. I got a bug on problem three because, uh, how do I see my submit? Oh, okay, it's up here. Oh, yeah, uh, frick, okay, so, um, I just, I printed out too much. So, yeah, I was using print functions to help. Um, yeah, first three problems were easy. Fourth problem is insanely difficult because it requires very pro math skills combined with very good implementation skills. And I'm not good at combining those. And that is why it's eight points. And yeah. Yeah, this is not good. I wish I didn't get that bug on number three. That would, I think that would place me higher. Okay, so um, next, USACO. US Open is coming up. Um, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I couldn't do it today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's going to be five hours instead of four hours. And uh, I am in I am in gold now. Yay. Because I qualified for gold last time. So I'll be doing the gold contest this time. <sighs> yeah. Like, very difficult. Like... Like, I probably can't solve any of the problems difficult. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, USACO is changing a bunch of their stuff. Like, they're putting their training camp um, online. And IOI is not going to be held. So, yeah. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I sounded way too dead. I need to stop using such a monotone voice.